today we're going to be discussing the second derivative test. So before we get to the second derivative test, I'd like you to remember the first derivative test. The first derivative test was a test or a method which allowed us to determine relative extrema of a given function, meaning you were able to determine if a given point was a relative maximum or a relative minimum or neither. So the, the test for the first derivative test involved the following. You needed to find the critical values of the function. Thereafter, you needed to compute the first derivative as said in the name. And once you've computed the first derivative, you then needed to evaluate the first derivative on the left and the right of each critical value and determine the sign. So we needed the sign. Based on the signs that we had obtained, meaning either positive or negative, we could then interpret if the given critical value would result in a relative maximum, a relative minimum, or neither. Um, so if the sign changed from positive to negative when you move from left to right, then that meant that we had a relative maximum. If it changed from negative to positive from left to right, then it meant that we had a relative minimum. And right now, the second derivative test, as given by the name, is a test for relative extrema which uses the second derivative. The idea here is that we determine if a given coordinate is a relative maximum or minimum by looking at the concavity of the graph, which is what we had covered in our previous video lecture. So considering what's happening around point x equals to a, observe that certainly the graph is concave up in this region. And based on what we had learned, a function was concave up on an interval if the second derivative evaluated at values x in that interval was greater than zero, so that's concave up. Observe that in the region where the function is concave up, we certainly have a relative minimum. So the coordinate a comma f of a is definitely a relative extrema of the function. So this is a relative min. Similarly, if we had to investigate what's happening on this half of the graph, Observe that the graph is concave down. Right, and what did that mean um, based on our definitions of concave down? It meant that the second derivative evaluated at x values um, in a reasonable interval here around point B was negative, so less than zero. And observe that in this region in which the, the graph is certainly concave down, we have a relative maximum. So it's clear graphically that concavity relates to extrema. And based on this observation, that is how the second derivative test has come about. So the second derivative test tells you the following, that if you have um, a critical value, so if f prime at a equals to 0, then we could test the value x equals to a to determine if there is a relative extrema at that point. So we test in the following way. So instead of if, let's say let. So suppose we have this critical value. Then if the second derivative evaluated at a is negative, we understand that that's going to be concave down then in that case, we have a relative maximum at A. Right, so then we have a relative max at x equals to A. And similarly, based on the observation there, if the second order derivative evaluated at x equals to A is positive, then that implies it's concave up, which means we have a relative minimum. And so this is the second derivative test. And essentially what it tells you is the following. If you've evaluated your second order derivative at some point and it's negative, then you have a relative maximum. So negative is associated with maximum. If you evaluated your second order derivative and it's positive, 
there at that point, then we have a relative minimum at that point. So positive is associated with minimum. All right, so keeping this in mind, let's go on to the next question. Use a second derivative test to find the relative extrema of the following function. So we know we're using the second derivative test, which means that we're going to have to compute the second derivative, as well as we need the critical values. So firstly, let's compute the first derivative. What is the first derivative of the above function? Derivative of 18x is 18, and derivative of 2 third x cubed is minus 2x squared. Right, so now I'm just going to proceed and compute the second order derivative. So derivative of 18 is 0, and derivative of minus 2x squared is minus 4x. So I've got the first order, and I've got the second order derivative. But before I use the second order derivative, I need the critical values, which means I need to solve y prime equals to 0. I need to determine the x values which satisfy this equation. So let's solve y prime equals to 0. That implies that 18 minus 2x squared equals to 0. And so let's factorize. If I factor out positive 2, I'm left with 9 minus x squared. And I can certainly factorize that, product of sum and difference. This is 3 minus x and 3 plus x. So as a result, I now have that x equals to 3 and, positive, and negative 3. So here are my critical values. So given that these are the critical values, the second derivative test tells you the following. Take your critical value and evaluate, plug it in into the second order derivative and evaluate the, the answer that you get. Is it positive or negative? Based on it being positive or negative, you will determine if there is a relative maximum or a relative minimum at each of these points. So let's find out what is y double prime at 3. y double prime at 3 is minus 4 times 3, which is minus 12. Right, so that equals to minus 12, which is certainly negative. And what is y double prime at negative 3? That's minus 4 times minus 3, which is positive 12. So that's certainly positive. And looking at our interpretation, whenever it is negative, then this implies that we have a relative maximum at x equals to 3. So meaning at 3 and so if this is f of x and at f at 3 and when y double prime is positive then we have a relative minimum at the coordinate minus 3 and f at minus 3. And so that is how you use your second derivative test to find relative extrema of functions.